Hey everyone, welcome to this video in which I'm going to take you through one of the questions from last year's hire paper. Now this was a really popular one, okay, it's the one about the crocodile and the zebra. Alright, so let's jump straight in. Um, so we've read the context of the question, I'm not going to bore you by reading through it, okay. We've got a crocodile here and the zebra, and the idea is, is the crocodile swims across the river, uh, runs up the bank and then tries to eat the zebra, alright. So um, the first part says, the time taken t is measured in tenths of a second is given by this relationship and we've got to calculate the time taken if the crocodile does not travel in land so if it doesn't travel in land it's basically going to swim up river like that and get out at that point all right so that means that x is going to be 20 okay so for part a one x is going to be 20 so that means that we're essentially going to work out t of 20, which you can do from your function skills. Okay, so the function skills you already have, you substitute a value in for x, this value is going to be 20 in this case, and that would mean that we would get 10.4 seconds. Now you'll actually get 104, but of course that's 104 tenths of a second, so that would be 10.4 seconds, all right? For part two, what it says is calculate the time taken if the crocodile swims the shortest distance possible. So if he's going to swim the shortest distance possible, then that means he's going to go straight across the river here, okay, at that shortest point, which is going to mean that x is going to be zero this time. All right, because he's not um, going any distance to p at all, he's going straight up there, so x is going to be zero. So then t of zero is, if we substitute zero in again, it's just going to be 11 seconds. Okay, so that's part A done, right? One mark for each, one mark for each answer. So let's take a look in the next slide at part B. Okay, so in part B we are asked between these two extremes, there is one value of x which minimises, okay, keyword, minimises the time taken. Find the value of x and hence calculate the minimum possible time. So this word minimise should stick out like a sore thumb and it tells us that we are doing an optimization question. Okay, so we're looking at our optimization. So we have a note on optimization anywhere. You want to be looking that up. Now, okay, optimization, right? So the idea is in optimization, what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate the function. We're going to make it equal to zero because that's where the stationary points are, that's where the minimum value will be. And then once we've made it equal to zero, we can solve. Okay, so I'm going to take you that take you through that solution just now. Alright, so we're going to start off with our function, but we're going to write it out um, by preparing it for differentiation. So the 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 form that it's given in has a square root. We don't want any square root signs in it. So we're going to have a, uh, 5 bracket 36 plus x squared and we're going to change that square root into a power of half and then we just have plus um, 80 because we're going to break the bracket minus 4x. Okay, so that means we can differentiate the function now. We're going to use chain rule for differentiation for this part. Alright, so here goes. So, that's going to give us um, 5 over 2, and the inside of the bracket stays the same. We subtract 1, so it's negative a half. And I'm going to multiply the bracket by the, what happens when we differentiate the result of the differentiation of inside the bracket. So if we differentiate what's inside the bracket, we're going to end up with 2x. Okay, so that's the first part. And then we want to differentiate this part of our function as well. 80 obviously just goes to 0, disappears, and then negative 4x is going to give us a negative 4. Alright, okay, so we've just got to tidy this up now. So it's quite nice because the 2 here and the 2x is going to cancel out. So our next line is going to be 5x in a bracket, 36 plus squared, negative a half. Okay, right, so next step. Okay, before we go into the next step, one really crucial thing, uh, kind of slipped my mind, deliberate mistake for all you teachers out there, uh, I want to show I've differentiated. 
So I need to put in t dash x. Okay, that's really key that we do that. Okay, so when I was just getting carried away and jumping straight into the differentiation, just need to watch that. Make sure you show the marker you've differentiated, show them what you're doing, and you write in t dash x. Okay, it'd be really useful at this point to write down a statement of some kind to show what you're going to do next. Okay, so I'm going to write down t dash x equals zero for or at the minimum. Right, so we know that, that minimum value of x, right, then t dash to x is going to be equal to 0. All right, and well, the minimum value of the function, uh, t dash to x is equal to 0. Okay, so let's make that equal to 0 then, and we'll try and solve it. So we have, so we have 5x, and I'm going to be slightly sneaky here, and I'm going to put this on the bottom line. And the denominator and give it a positive power. Oops. Let me rub that out and try again. There we are, that's a bit neater. Okay. And then minus of four is equal to zero. And of course, the, the easiest thing to do here, you can do this in as many steps as you want. Okay, but I could then change that power a half into the square root. Alright? Okay. So, the next thing I want to do is I really want to get rid of this square root sign. Okay? That's going to be problematic in my working. Alright? So what I'm going to want to do is just square everything. Alright? So let's just square absolutely everything that's there. So we have 25x squared on the top. If we square the whole denominator of that fraction, we just get 36 plus x squared, and 4 squared is of course 16. Okay, right, now we're going somewhere, okay? So we're going to take the 16 over to the other side of the equal sign, okay? So we're going to use our balancing, and we're going to add 16 on this side, um, and add 16 on the other side as well, whichever way you want to think about it. You either think about change side, change sign, old school style, or we can um, add on 16 to both sides entirely up to yourself. Okay, but what we're going to end up with then is the following. So we're going to get 25x squared is equal to 16, and then I've multiplied by the 36 plus x squared on both sides. So we get that result there. Okay, so just to go over what I did again, okay. Took the 16, added 16 to both sides of my equation, so the 16 popped up in here and cancelled out on here, and then multiplied by the 36 plus x squared on the other side. So I'm trying to get x squared by themselves, okay, and on their own as much as possible. So I'm going to break this bracket now, multiply that out. Okay, nice easy step here. 25x squared is equal to 16 times 36 is 576. Plus 16 x squared, okay? Right, I'm going to take us on to the, new, the next slide now. Okay, so from the previous slide I had 25x squared equals 576 plus 16x squared. Okay, and all I'm going to do now is I'm going to group my x squared terms together and simplify. So that of course is going to give me 9x squared is equal to 576. And then dividing gives me x squared is equal to 64, and therefore x is equal to 8. Now, of course, x is equal to positive and negative 8, but with x, we are dealing with a length. All right? Because we're dealing with a length, we don't have to include that part. Right? Okay, so x equals 8, and we're almost finished. So x is equal to 8 is, of course, the number of metres upstream. So it'll be 8 metres, OK? So x equals 8 is the number of metres upstream that the crocodile swims in order to minimise the time. All right, minimise the time taken. So let's hope the crocodile can do his calculus. All right, so what we've got to do next is because x equals 8, just like in part A, we're going to figure out what t of 8 is. OK, and if we work that out, that's... 
seconds. Okay, so that's the last part of the question, right? Um, I hope that's made sense. Of course, in these videos, you can rewind as many times as you want. That's why I've tried not to repeat things as, as often as I can. Um, so that, you know, if, if you understand it, you can move on. If you don't get it, just go back. And again, if you want to ask any more questions about the working, um, please message me on Facebook and I'll get back in contact with you and sort it out. Okay, thanks very much for watching uh, and see you next time.